What's up guys, this is Project Gamer and this is me, Alec Brill. Today we're gonna continue on from what we did last time where we stopped off with the Nintendo and Nintendo's big reign of power in gaming. Well, later on they brought in the Super Nintendo, which revolutionized it even further. You had better graphics, it was 16-bit. The Nintendo was just 8-bit. You're doubling the pixels, you got better looking everything. You have their looks on their faces and everything. You have Mario, he looks better, he looks defined. You know what he's wearing, you know what he looks like now. Instead of this kind of blocky dude just running across. You have Mega Man, you can see his arm, you can see his blaster, you can see how defined it is and everything. You have all these newer graphics into the system. Nintendo just started bringing out better graphics with all their newer systems. They went on to the Nintendo 64, which brought in 3D gameplay, practically. Three, not 3D gaming as we have today, but 3D as in polygons together. They look like somewhat real. At least it probably looked real then, I don't know. But <laughs> you had a full figured Mario. You'd run around third person, which is a view over your character as you're running around this free world. You went. I mean, Super Mario 64, I believe it's called, yeah. <clears throat> Super Mario 64, you would run, you'd have this little guy telling you what you needed to do. You need to go to the castle, blah, 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 blah. You run to the castle, it's locked. Well, at least it was in the 3DS version, which I'll get to later. But you'd run in the castle and you hear Bowser's laugh. I mean, the whole thing with this Nintendo 64, you had way more to offer. You had more views points. I mean, regularly, when, when you thought of a 3D viewpoint, you had an overview, which was your character was like this flat guy against the ground. You're running around. But now you have a full three-dimensional character running around. And it would change camera viewpoints, which could be aggravating at some points, but you'd figure it out eventually. I mean, Nintendo 64 was the best cartridge system I can think of. I mean, then you get to the GameCube, which was brought out way later. It was much different than the other disc systems that had come out then. I mean, the disc was like this small. It was ridiculous. I mean, you never see a disc that's that small for anything. <clears throat> but games like for that were Luigi's Mansion. That was like the biggest thing to me. You go around a mansion getting ghosts and saving Mario, you're never going to play as Luigi in any game. People, a lot of fans were outraged because we don't want to play as Luigi. No one cares about Luigi. He's just Mario's br knockoff brother. I mean, you get, when you play as Luigi though in that game, it has a better sense to me because you're saving your brother. He'd been taken by ghosts. I mean, that's a new angle with the booze and stuff from the original Mario, but just that whole new outlook on what you could do with a Mario game and the power of this newer system, a disc system. It just made everything work better. The defined graphics, you went to 32-bit practically in the <clears throat> GameCube. I mean, you're doubling up on graphics <laughs> over and over again, which makes it just look amazing. You go from the GameCube with Nintendo to a newer console from them, which came out right after the Xbox 360 and the PS3, the Wii. It brought in motion gaming. I mean, no one had ever kind of perfected motion gaming. I mean, you had like the bigger arcade games where you could like move around and aim a gun at a screen and stuff, but motion, this motion gaming, you had a lot you could do. You could aim it at the screen and it'd be pretty much spot on. You could see what you were doing. I mean, Zelda on it even. You, the way you swung your sword, you actually swung your controller. The way you held your shield, you would push up the nunchuck, the block. It was amazing. I mean, just the new aspect of you can aim and shoot, you can swing your sword in any direction. I mean, they brought in Wii Motion Plus even, which made it even more defined and controlled. You had Skyward Sword and, I mean, Mario, on there was pretty much the regular controls, but you could also do stuff with the motion controls. You, when you were jumping with a certain helmet, I believe, like this 
box helmet, I think? Maybe, I don't remember. But if you shook your controller, you could fly up in the air. That added so much to get to gameplay. I mean, just the air, more interactive. The kids could do it too. I mean, it's a, it's family friendly. That's Nintendo, family friendly games. But the family friendly stuff kind of is wearing out now. You have the Wii U. It's bringing in newer games like Assassin's Creed, Black Ops 2. All these games are really kind of not always family friendly. You have games that are going to be kind of explicit. You have Zombie U, all this bloody gory games, all these new things. The Wii U is great for pretty much anything. You have, I mean, it's great for family gaming, yeah, but you have these newer games which are not really suited for kids. I mean, you have the new Mario. I mean, <clears throat> with the Wii U, you had this new controller. It had a touchpad. It has a touchpad on it. That adds more interactivity to it, and it has motion control. I mean, you're getting way in depth into these games. You can do so much for them. But, <clears throat> but rewinding and going back to the like disc games, everything started out with disc games like the, <clears throat> everything with disc games started out with the PlayStation. That was the first disc game console. Sony just wanted to do something new. They took the aspect of a compact disc a DVD disc, practically. I don't even know if they had DVDs then, but <clears throat> you took a compact disc and put a game on it. And with like a laser reader, it can make the gameplay look amazing and almost realistic. I mean, you had games like Silent Hill, which honestly, that game is scary. <laughs> I can't play Silent Hill 2 because it scares me more than any other game. I mean, it's been rated the top scariest game ever made. I mean, you have like PC games like Slender now that are jump scary, but just the whole aspect of Silent Hill 2 is messed up. But PlayStation really took Nintendo by surprise. They weren't, Nintendo wasn't expecting a, just a new rival game company just to spawn out of nowhere and blow them out of the water with a newer, better graphic console. I mean, with the PlayStation, the whole disc thing just, it was new. Originally, it was all cartridges, all 8-bit, all whatever. I mean, I played PlayStation 2 all the time. I didn't know about the Xbox. I mean, there were commercials and stuff for it. Like, I remember I always wanted to play Grab by the Ghoulies, but that wasn't on PlayStation. And eventually, when we got the Xbox, I kind of just stopped playing the PlayStation because you had, I mean, there were many things you could have done with PlayStation at that point. There, there was, online gaming for some games, but that actually was implemented in the GameCube at one point. I mean, not many people really used it, but you had games like Fantasy Star Online that I knew a couple people actually played. I've never honestly played a fan Fantasy Star game that often, but the only one I've played lately was like the original Fantasy Stars. I wanted to get through them so I'd have some knowledge of what a good RPG was like so I could do some more game design because I'm in the da game design class. And we need to know these elements that'll make a game good. I mean, the RPG element is great for any game. I mean, you get to RPG like, for say Final Fantasy, that has the greatest Final, <clears throat> the greatest RPG feel in any game, besides Chrono Trigger, which was even better. That was just to me. I mean, Final Fantasy just kind of goes on in storyline, kind of like Zelda. I mean, Zelda, there's no plot. I mean, the first game is like the last game in the sequence, and it's ridiculous. No one knows. I mean, there's a new book out called The Hyrule Astoria. I plan on getting it, so I know more about that. But anyways, PlayStation 2 went up to PlayStation 3 at that point. PlayStation 3, to me, it looks like it has the best graphics of any system because it has a special thing that Sony did for it. It was like VHD gaming. I don't remember. Wait, FHD. My bad. FHD gaming, which is pretty much full high definition, you have a better definition through HDMI cables to your TV. I mean, if you co like <clears throat> coordinate a S PlayStation 3 with a Sony Bravia, they're both Sony products and it's gonna look amazing. I mean, PlayStation, it upped graphics completely. It had help from Toshiba making the Blu-ray disc and the Blu-ray player in it. I mean, that concept, a console that can play 
<clears throat> DVDs. I mean, Blu-ray DVDs, that's the best definition you can get. And you won't even have to buy a Blu-ray player. I mean, what's a better deal than get a PS3? You have a Blu-ray player, you have a gaming device, and it even has its own internet browser. You could go around the internet doing whatever you do on the internet. I mean, you've never, I've never had so much mobility with a console, if I want to say that correctly more interactivity with the console. I could do way more with the PS3 than I could at an Xbox. I mean, or a game, or any Nintendo console at that point. I mean, when the Wii came along, it had an internet browser, but the Wii came along right at, like after the PlayStation 3. Before the PlayStation 3 came out, you had the Xbox 360, which was even better. I mean, on the Xbox <clears throat> originally, you had Halo, you had all these amazing games. I mean, Halo was one of the better first-person shooters I've ever played. I mean, it had a great storyline, along with it had amazing graphics. It was made by Microsoft, a company that was used to making really up there games and up there anything, but in that fact, they make computers so they can make an awesome console. I mean, once Xbox came out, they brought out actual true servered online gaming because they could do that with their Computers, I mean, a console that goes online, that's amazing to me. I mean, when I got Xbox Live when I was eight, I mean, I wasn't one of those kids who would run around yelling every curse word in the book every time he got killed or anything. I mean, I was one of those kids who just kind of sat back and was like, this is really fun. These guys are really mean and all these things. I made sure I was in the top leaderboards at one point. I mean, that quickly fell once I stopped playing Xbox for a bit, once we kind of got a PS3. <clears throat> I mean, I got the X my dad got the Xbox 360 after the Xbox came out. I mean, on the Xbox you had Halo, Halo 2. Those games were widely loved by all of a lot of gamers. I mean, for PlayStation you had games that came out like Call of Duty. I mean, on PlayStation, I had Medal of Honor, which was pretty much older Call of Duty. <laughs> you had Medal of Honor before you had Call of Duty. And then Xbox got a version of Call of Duty. I mean, they started to have that game that would go on both consoles, so both, both console lovers would have their own experience. But <clears throat> once it got to that point, they started making exclusives toward those consoles. So if you really wanted to play that game, you'd have to get that console and buy their console. Then you'd have both consoles and you'd be like, I'm kind of happy with myself. I've wasted my money, but it was worth it. I have all those games. But Xbox 360 comes out. Then the most anticipated game of that time, Halo 3, which I have enjoyed Halo. And that was probably one of the better Halos. I mean, Halo 2, honestly, is still my favorite. But once you get to that, you have this big anticipation for the mic the <clears throat> Xbox 360 you go and get it and you have Halo 3 now you have Ace Combat all these new games that have amazing high definition graphics i mean you think of what you think that play the original PlayStation the PlayStation 2 and Xbox had amazing graphics you get to HD gaming with the Xbox 360 i mean you weren't used to having this really high resolution, you could see almost everything. Everything looked realistic. You, On some games, you could even see people sweat. That's weird. <laughs> I mean, you get all these new systems coming out. And some people, that's just too much at one point, but some people, the other people are just like, we were totally ready for this. And you have all those gamers who were true to every system. You have the ones who are die-hard PlayStation fans, the die-hard Xbox fans who will bag on either console. When there's me who I'm accepting of all consoles, I love all of them. I mean, gaming, I think I was just, I was just the gaming child. That's all I like to do now. Cause I'll go between the Wii, I'll go between the Wii U, I'll go between Xbox and PS3. I'll play all of them now. I don't have a limit to where, oh, I don't like PS3 cause blah, 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 blah. I like all the systems. I mean, they're all good for their own special differences. <clears throat> but 
besides consoles, you had handhelds. I mean, Nintendo, in their little fall of console releases, besides the consoles, you had handhelds, which Nintendo was really known for because you had the Game Boy, which advanced into the Game Boy Color. I mean, Game Boy was black and white. You had all these games, like, I remember I had Rainbow Six for the Game Boy, and those were some really, really low-res graphics. Those things were so blocky to me. I mean, my favorite game on there, honestly, was Tetris, because the music, you, I mean, with Nintendo's original Game Boy games, you had, there wasn't a backlight like the newer systems. You had to actually have a light to shine on it, or else you wouldn't see what you're doing. Then you get the Game Boy Color, you have color, and then they bring out games like Pokemon. Pokemon was one of the top games because you have that turn base. I mean, it's based off the anime, this amazing anime that Japan that came out right out of Japan to America. I mean, everyone loved it. You had that goal, of, that goal of I gotta catch all the Pokemon, and then <laughs> recently they practically ran out of colors because you had like Pokemon. Green, red, blue, yellow, then gold, silver, crystal, and then you get the like more fresh, more valuable, precious stones like emerald, ruby, sapphire, and all these things. And once you ran out of all those, they're just like, you know what? We'll make something different. Since we have the 3DS out now, we're gonna invent Pokemon X and Y. I mean, that makes sense to me because with 3D, you have the X, Y, Z axis and X and Y, blah, blah, blah. It's not some gender thing, no, whatever. But going back to like the Game Boy, the Game Boy Color, they started, those were doing amazing because people could walk around playing the Game Boy. I mean, who, who not everyone just wants to stay at home. I mean, what are you gonna do on a boring car ride somewhere? You could have an, you could be playing a video game while your parents were babbling on or listening to some terrible music that you didn't like. <laughs> I mean, you get to the Game Boy Advance, the Game Boy Advance, which was like a newer look, and then it had newer cartridges, which had better graphics than the Game Boy cartridges originally. <clears throat> you would get all these new things with these handhelds. Like, the handhelds have always stayed cartridge, for the most part. I mean, Sony started doing handheld games, like the PSP. It had a UMD, a universal media disc, which it was in a little case, but you slid it into the PSP and you'd have practically HD graphics on a handheld. You didn't have that on Nintendo systems. You just had the fun, entertaining 16-bit games. I mean, once they came out with the, once Nintendo came out with the DS, they actually started to compete with Sony's invention of the PSP. I mean, you had the touch screen, you had everything. I mean, going back to the Game Boy Advance, they came out with the Game Boy Advance SP, which had a backlight, so then you wouldn't have to worry about having a light all the time. You could be playing in the dark while... That. <clears throat> you could be playing in the dark. That's something no one could ever do with a Game Boy or a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance. The Game Boy Advance SP was so popular. I mean, you could get, for the Game Boy Advance, you could buy a little light that you hooked onto the front and had shining over it so you could see it, but I mean, that guy got tiring and it really got annoying to replace the batteries for it. I mean, the SP had everything built in. It was practically the perfect handheld device at that point. I mean, once you got to all these new consoles, you could, <clears throat> I mean, <clears throat> once, you got, once you got to all these new handhelds, you had the DS, which advanced into the DS Lite, which was like the slim, not bulky, regular DS, which the I honestly think the DS, what the first DS was the best looking DS. It had the best, better feel to it, and plus it was practically indestruct indestructible. The DS Lights, those, they're, if you mess with them wrong, they get flimsy and they break. But I'm not bagging on the systems, they're amazing handhelds. I mean, they evolved into the DSi, which brought the DS, but with internet and the online shop, like a marketplace where you could download games to your handheld. I mean, you, no one knew you could do that at that point. That's just awesome. I mean, the PS Vita had that 
<clears throat> the PSP had that as well. And then they brought out the PS Vita, which was a touchscreen, front and back. And it had dual joysticks. I mean, it came out right after the 3DS, which had one joystick, a touchpad, same things as the regular DS. But then you had a 3D, it had 3D with no glasses, which that was amazing to people. 3D without glasses? I mean, you go through the time frames now, 3D used to be you had to wear those weird red and blue glasses and ooh, it's scary. Now, now we have like true, real 3D, which is these clear glasses that, I mean, if you watch a movie or whatever without them, it's just like there's a little slot to the left, but once you put them on, it's all full, and then it looks like everything's popping out. Well, with the 3DS, when you ha turned on the depth all the way and you got your eyes to a certain position, because like, if you didn't have a certain position, it just looked weird. But everything looked, I mean, <clears throat> everything looked like it was in there. It was, the, con the handheld screen itself was like this box, and your character was running around through it. It was really cool. I mean, they remade Ocarina of Time, one of the best Zelda games of all time, on it. I mean, that, in 3D, that game looks amazing. Plus, they remastered it, so it looked even better. I mean, once you remaster a game, like, one of the most popular games of all time, and make it look better and give it more features, I mean, it even had a master quest after you beat it, so you could go back and do even harder dungeons. I can't even, I haven't even beaten it yet. It's kind of difficult, even for a Zelda fan like me. But you get into these amazing graphics. I mean, you get the PS Vita, which is comparably the exact same as having an HD TV in your hand. And <clears throat> you, you had all the current games on the PS Vita. It, it's just, Amazing how handhelds have advanced from this little blocky game system to this practically handheld gaming console. I mean, that's what they were, but it was almost comparable exactly to a PS3 or an Xbox 360. The graphics were are just amazing. I mean, they even have a function to where you can hook the PS Vita up to your PS3 and then play the PS3 game on your PS Vita. That's amazing. All these great things you can do with these consoles now. I mean, all the new consoles are amazing. And like what we have today, the Wii U, the Xbox 360, the PS3, I mean, there are even more consoles coming out. They haven't announced them yet, but everyone knows they're gonna come out. The PS4 probably, the Xbox, 720? No, they're not gonna call it that, by the way. That would be stupid. And what shape are they gonna make that looks like a 720? That is a 720. What is that, two circles? I don't know. Let's see, we're in the eighth generation of consoles, I believe, now. And the Wii U is the first of the, H the new next-gen consoles. I mean, the Wii brought along motion gaming, which made... PlayStation want to bring in motion gaming, so they have PS Move now. You could do things on Killzone. You could, I don't even know if this is true, but you could like run up and choke a guy with the controls. I mean, that's really cool. That's adding that new level of interactive online. You could, it was pretty much like the um, Wii. You could aim and shoot. You had all these newer looking controls. It was amazing. And then for Xbox 360, Originally, they had this idea called Project Natal, which was you had a sensor that read your movements and you could control all this stuff with your hands and your legs. You don't even have to have a controller. You are the controller. And then Connect comes out, which is Project Natal. Connect is one of the best motion gaming things ever. I mean, a lot of the games are kind of goofy for it. I mean, they wanted to make it a little more children friendly because a lot of, I mean, a lot of kids, they want to move around. They don't want to be stuck sitting down. Your little kids are going to be wanting to play all these cool little games like Connect Adventures where you would go and do all these crazy little jump around, run around things. I mean, they even have Sesame Street for it. 
I mean, all these awesome things, they just brought about through motion gaming. I mean, Nintendo brought that idea back into it. And then PS3 and Xbox were just like, you know what, we'll make something better. I mean, I don't hear much about the PS3 move anymore. I mean, no one really talks about it because it was more of, I think it was more of for certain games mainly. I can't wait for all the new consoles and I'm happy to let you guys know about all this gaming history. All these older consoles that brought us up to what we are, what we have now. I mean, it's mind blowing, honestly. You got all these like things where you're just like a triangle shooting lines at big blocks that are to represent asteroids, like an asteroid for the Atari. You get all these new things. And now it's just amazing what you can do with gaming. They implement gaming into a lot of things now. I mean, you can use the Kinect for coding for video, like for more video games. It's ridiculous. But I just, I'm happy to tell you guys about all of this awesome history that led up to what we have now. The next episode, I'm going to talk about that competition between them now. I mean, all that competition, all that rivalry. That, heck, M Nintendo, when I was talking about how they were blown out of the water, I mean, yeah, I've mentioned how they brought in all these new aspects like motion gaming. When Nintendo was blown out of the water, I meant like they were out of the console race, even with the Wii. The main things were PS3 and Xbox, because those were HD, they were fighting each other, who would get the best of whatever. And now it's kind of evened out to where everyone has both and they kind of are equivalent to either. They're, they like both, some they like more than others. But I just want to say, all those games, all those consoles, all those handhelds, brought what we have now, which is probably the best gaming experience for now until they bring out something where, heck, it could probably even be almost practically lifelike. But I want to thank you guys for watching this episode and sharing me, for letting me share with you the history of all of our video games. So thanks guys, and this is Alec Brill signing out.